Thank you. It's a bit. Yeah. It's a bit scary to be the only historian in this room. So if I collapse, there might be a doctor to to assist me. <laughs> Um, this photo is, was taken in the light, uh, late 1940s when a scholar from the University of Copenhagen came to interview one of the natives on the, in the Faroe Islands on, on the western side of this uh, island. Yeah, very much. So, so um, but I come back to this one. So, um, to sum up short, um, the early settlement on the Faroe Islands um, uh, was some, somewhere between 500 and 800. And we don't know really uh, if we are Norwegian or we are from the British Isles, but it was at that time when the, the Vikings, the seafaring people, went up north to the North Atlantic and uh, to land in, uh, in the Faroes and Iceland and further to Greenland. So there are not so many written sources from the, from the Viking Age in the Faroes, aside from the, from the uh, Icelandic uh, sagas. So um, uh, in Iceland they say that the only reason uh, uh, that peop the people stayed on the Faroes uh, was that uh, they, uh, the people on, on the Faroes were seasick and they didn't come to the Iceland. <laughs> so maybe it's so. But there are excavations uh, all over the islands, as you can see on this map. And uh, there are some human activities back to 500. So uh, that's it. The most... The, the finest thing we have from, from the uh, med medieval uh, ages, the Middle Ages, is the bishop, uh, bishop, uh, bishopric in, uh, in Chichterbury on the other side of, of this island. I'm not sure you're going to have some uh, trip to, to Chichterbury. Is it in the program? You should go there. So it's, um, it's uh, 15, 20 minutes from here. So. Um, and, and uh, there are still some uh, excavations in, in, uh, in uh, Chishbosh. There was a priest that uh, uh, published a um, topographic uh, work in the late 19th century. And he said something like that. What happened in the pharaohs from the Middle Ages until uh, the 20th century? Nothing. So, um, but there hap a lot of things happened because we were connected to, uh, to, uh, to Norway, to the Hanseatic uh, trade in, in Bergen. But it came to an end uh, in, uh, in the middle of the 16th century and swifted to Denmark. And that's how the pharaohs were what we call a monocultural uh, society based on that we had only had one, uh, there was only dry fish to, to sell uh, in Bergen. And after that, it was uh, knitted socks for uh, uh, the trade in Copenhagen. And the foreign trade in the Faroes, this is actually just outside the hotel. We had some foreign trade uh, uh, and from the, from the early 18th century until the, in, until the middle of the 19th, 19th century, we had the Danish, Royal Danish monopoly trade. And the only, um, let's say, shop in the islands was here in Tinkanes uh, next to you. So the historical periods in the North Atlantic, it was first the, uh, the, uh, the Viking Age, and uh, where you, we had the settlement, and then from um, the next was the uh, European influence, European kingdoms. Then we were marginalized and uh, by the, actually by the Hanseatic trade in Bergen or in Norway. And we lost actually the connection with Norway at that time uh, and, and, uh, and, and the trade was uh, swifted to Copenhagen. 
And, and actually, the, this, uh, how do you say, this uh, uh, royal monopoly trade was uh, governing the, uh, the islands, just as uh, in Iceland and Greenland. And these uh, North, North Atlantic uh, societies were very uh, static. There were no development. And we say in Ferris historiography, we say that uh, the modernization started when uh, the royal trade was abandoned in uh, 1856. And um, just to show that uh, the first uh, public census was in 1801 in the whole of uh, the Danish kingdom, there were 5,000 people on the Faroes and uh, 500 here in Torshavn. Uh, at that time, Torshavn was larger than Reykjavik. So, uh, uh, and uh, 100 years later, we were 15,000 and uh, about 1,600 here in Torshan, the capital town. The fishing society is what we historians, uh, both Ferris historians and, and uh, uh, historians uh, abroad say that the fishing society that came, that, uh, that had its breakthrough uh, in the 1880s, 90s, is what uh, was the Faroese uh, Industrial uh, Revolution. It was sailing vessels, there was no uh, industry, really. But people were moving from the farms into the, uh, to, to the, to the towns to get a job. The men went on sea, seasonal, started in the spring and came back home in, in the autumn. And uh, the women, they uh, uh, were the, at the first time uh, producing these uh, uh, salt fish for, for the market in, in southern Europe, in Spain, uh, Portugal, just as Iceland did. The women came on the labor market for the first time. And um, at that time, uh, when nothing happened, according to the Danish priest, the national movement uh, started uh, in, in the 1880s by uh, ferry students in Denmark, Copenhagen, university students. And uh, at first it was not uh, a political movement, it was more a cultural movement to preserve the Ferris language. The written Ferris language was gone. It was open a spoke, only a spoken language. And also the customs we had in common uh, were uh, to be uh, safeguarded as the national dress and the fairy stones and so on and so on. So it was pretty much a counterculture to what uh, Denmark. I don't know if you know about it, but we have, a, we have our own language in, in the Faroes. Yeah. So our second language is Danish. Still it's Danish, but not for long. <laughs> I'll tell you that in a minute. Also, at that time when we got uh, this fishing society, um, the, uh, how do you say, the Norwegian companies from Sandefjord, especially from Sandefjord in Norway, came to establish uh, uh, the whaling industry, commercial whaling industry, not, not to compare with pilot whaling that we have in, uh, in the Faroes. And established seven, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, whaling stations all over the islands, and it was also seasonal. But it was uh, the Norwegians that introduced us to, uh, actually, to uh, industry. Steam-driven uh, stations and uh, whale chasers. And then it was a war with about 9,000 Scottish and English soldiers on the Faroes during the Second World War. They caused a lot of uh, social, uh, cult social cultural changes. And uh, it was at that time that the Faroes were a, a Danish county. And after the war, there was something both, uh, the, uh, as we said, in the Faroes and the government in Denmark, we have to change this because um, uh, you, uh, we were cut off. Uh, every connection with Denmark for five years during the Second World War. And um, 
There was a referendum in 1946. You can see the sketch. It's about to leave uh, uh, the Danish kingdom or to, uh, to uh, establish a, a nation state in the Faroes. It didn't get like that, but we got a Home Rule uh, Act in 1944. Iceland left the United Kingdom, uh, the Danish Kingdom, uh, for good in, nine, in 1944. So there was something going on in the North Atlantic. And we still have this uh, Home Rule Act with a Home Rule government and two members in the Danish uh, parliament. Just some few years later, uh, uh, the whole society collapsed, and. Uh, but it was established with a new uh, fishing fleet in the mid-1950s when we got these new uh, sight trawlers or sight winches, as uh, you can see on photos. Uh, one of the uh, Republicans, uh, Republican uh, politicians in the Faroes, Erlander Peterson, he was from Chichbury, said that as long as we produce fish to an uh, uh, overpopulated uh, uh, world, we can establish a, a, a nation state on, uh, in the Faroes. But it's not like that uh, in these days. The modernization and welfare came in the 1960s and 70s. I myself, uh, I'm born, I was born here in Torshan in 1963. And if I look back, as an old man. Uh, the society at that time, it was housewives and fishermen. That's it. I think uh, at that time there were some 140 ferries uh, 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 candidates from universities uh, all over, mainly from, from Denmark. And the fishermen were seeking the fishing grounds in Iceland and Greenland and in Norway and settling in Iceland and in Norway and in Denmark. It was also at that time when we got these uh, processing plants all over in, in all these, uh, on, in every town and in large uh, uh, villages. And uh, also the uh, healthcare and hospital was extended. This hospital, the National Hospital, as we call it in, in Torshan, was extended in the 60s. And I believe that uh, Gunnar Lomholt, is he famous by you? Yeah, you know about him, yeah. He stayed in Klaxvik, as I understand, for some years at the hospital in Klaxvik. To sum up, short, uh, the net migration here shows that, uh, that uh, we lost a lot of uh, people uh, during the crisis in the 1950s, and also that it was a huge economic crisis in, uh, in the early 1990s, and a lot of people went to Denmark. And I ask myself, are the Faroes still attractive since we are a, a fishing society or maritime nation? Because uh, the, I, I, can, I can't see that, that uh, the young people find it interesting to work in a processing plant or stay away for months in the Barents Sea. So to sum up the Faroes, uh, we are a maritime uh, and welfare society as well. It's still a, a matter of definition as I see it since we, uh, uh, the, the national movement was established uh, in, in, uh, in the late uh, 19th century. It's still to find a position in the changing world. I mentioned it earlier that uh, our second language is Danish. It means that our door to the Nordic world, to the Nordic and Scandinavian countries, is Danish. But my wife, she's a school teacher, and she says that uh, most of the pupils in school, they don't speak Danish anymore, it's English. So um, it was nothing political by that, but it, it's, uh, yeah. It's still about pres uh, uh, the preservation and safeguarding of uh, of. Uh, of a Ferris culture and identity. Uh, I hope you can see that the Ferris is uh, technolo technologically upfront. The infrastructure is very good. 
in these days. We get subsea tunnels all over. Uh, so the society is still on the move with uh, the pelagic industry, uh, uh, mackerel and herring, but also the fish farming. But the pharaohs are also a very traditional society at the same time as the technology is, and it is a modern society. And by today we are 55,000 people, but we have a lot of uh, migrant workers here as well. And they are working in the processing plants and catering and, and so on. So it uh, will be still be a future for the pharaohs, but uh, we are still also losing uh, youngsters uh, uh, to uh, to Denmark and, and all over. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. We have time for questions. If anybody, uh, yeah. the origin of the name Pharaoh. Yeah, it means in in, in Nordic. Uh, it, yeah, it means sheep. It's the sheep islands. Yeah. It's interesting. So Got it's a question there at the. Uh, yeah. yeah. Got a fascinating talk. Uh, one thing you didn't mention was the strategic uh, importance of potentially of the Faroe Islands. I'm thinking of the Arctic area. Yeah. And Russia's. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for the question. It's a very good question because uh, just after, if I go back just after the, the Second World War, we got part of, in the Cold War and, and, and uh, NATO and the Americans came here to establish some and, uh, uh, radio stations on, on the islands that uh, connected Greenland, Iceland and the Faroes with the UK and the rest of Europe, the early warning chain. In these days, it's very tense in the Ferris Parliament because uh, we have uh, we have uh, what do you call it uh, fishery agreements with uh, with Russia, and that agreement is on debate in the Parliament these days. And we are, uh, if I s just say it very short, it, it's it's very tense in the Ferris by now because uh, uh, we know that. Uh, in Greenland, if you heard about the Tula base up north, they're going to establish another base since uh, the Chinese and, and Russians are just on the other side of uh, on, in, in East Greenland. And, and it's the same here in the Faroes that, uh, that the radio station up in the mountains uh, is going to be uh, modernized. So uh, how important we are in the Faroes I can't tell you, but we are a little bit important, just as Iceland is. Yeah, yeah. But we are not part of NATO, but as part of the United of the Danish Kingdom, we have uh, uh, we are connected to NATO. Yeah, yeah. It's the same in in uh, in, in Shetland. You have uh, bases in, in Shetland as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, in, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know about it, but I can't tell you the story because I don't know it. Yeah, but it's true in the church of Kalpak, there is one. Yeah. 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 Fascinating, huh? Yeah. 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 We don't know. They've been there all the summer. Yeah. It's just having fun in the fjord. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. 
uh, this summer. I'm not sure, but it was uh, quite a lot this summer. I, some of them uh, uh, are private, and some of them belong to the uh, what do you call uh, these? Uh, how do you say it in English? Uh, yeah, not the government. Well, it's in the town halls, what the communes, what do you call it? it yeah, we are all. We all, all have the same electricity company. So it's also part of, of their windmills, but some of them are private or semi private. Yeah? The size of the fishing industry is gradually reducing. So, what's replacing? Other other industries that are growing up? Tourism is, yeah, yeah, and tourism. Is, it has nothing to do with fish, but it's a, what I mentioned earlier. It's a monocultural uh, society. It's fish, it's salmon, it's uh, codfish, it's mackerel, it's herring. Just as in uh, on the British Isles and in Ireland, and uh, and uh, and then we are facing uh, industry uh, uh, tourism as an industry. A few days ago, I, I went uh, just downtown here, and uh, I think there were two native ferries. It was a couple I knew, I know, and myself, and the rest of them came from all over. So we can see it. And a few um, decades ago, it was only during the summer, but now it's uh, also in the winter as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. You read it on Google. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah one, one last one. Uh, what is the interaction with the North Atlantic Islands? Do you interact with the Shetland and Not so much with uh, Shetland. There was a scholar from Shetland a few weeks ago here. He was introducing one of his new books, and he said that um, uh, he wanted, how do you say it? Uh, uh, more collaboration with us in, in the Faroes. In the old days when we got those smacks we bought from uh, the UK when we became a seafaring fishing uh, society, there were Faroes fishermen with these uh, smacks from Shetland, but we don't have that much uh, uh, connection with Shetland. Uh, they say that they want us, they want Shetland to be like the Faroes because they say we are on speed all the time. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, and, uh, and, and they wish a, uh, a home rule uh, act just as, we, just as we have. So we yeah. are, yeah. Yeah? Okay, well, great. Thank you so much. Great Thank talk.